Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is the podcast for you. Hello, friends. Welcome to your favorite podcast, Frankly. It's Crazy Shit in Real Estate. I'm Lee Brown. If you're one of my regulars, you're going to really love today's episode because I'm fixing to love it too. And if you're new to the show, you've got a lot of catching up to do to find out about what HGTV is not telling you about realtor life and mortgage life and inspector life and all the things that happen in and around real estate. And today I'm bringing y'all a guest from Northern California. We've got Ron Schuer with us. And frankly, I like how Ron told me how to pronounce his name. He says, are you sure? And then he said his mom did not make his middle name you. So Ron, your mom missed a chance, but you don't miss many chances in life. And welcome to the show. I appreciate it. Thanks, Leah, for inviting me. All right. So tell our people a little bit about yourself, what you're doing, how long you've been around the real estate space, all that fun stuff. Sure. Well, currently... My background's been in about 30 years of software uh, sales, but uh, in 2000 to 2007, I was part of the uh, real estate group. I was very successful, uh, top producing agent in the north of close to up to 50 listings. At, at that one year, pushing 50 listings was named, I have to archive that too, but was named the number one fastest growing realtor on Yahoo before Google came around and so forth, uh, using technology as a advocate and promoting you know homes out there to the uh, the consumers and so forth via online. And how weird is it that it hasn't been that long, but Yahoo already feels dated? And if you'd said AOL, I would have assumed you were a 90 years old. <laughs> yeah, AOL was still there. <laughs> um, yeah, no, yeah, so yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, it, it is strange just, just to mention that. But yeah, it's, it was definitely uh, a time where I believe in 2000 when the dot com had crashed. I still remember this date. I was going into the real estate. Somebody said, look, go into real estate. You know, the market's hot. And I was, you know, still fiddling around with either going to a large organization in the software industry. Um, but I decided to jump into real estate in 2000, get my license. And then from there on, I think it was, I think it was, don't quote me on this, but I, I, I think it's somewhere in the north of 60,000 agents came on board that year. And so we're from coming from the dot com into the industry of becoming a realtor and so forth, or an agent. With that said, the uh, there was a gentleman, I think I really spoke with at NAR that interviewed most of us and so forth there uh, during after a testing event out in Sacramento and said, look to the right, look to the left. <laughs> and, and I was like, well, what's this for? He's like, don't trust each other. <laughs> like, where does this thing Are you what? serious? He said yeah. that? And I was like, uh, that's some of the stuff, you know, of course, getting new to it, like, what, is, what does that mean? Don't trust each other. That's my colleague, up where, you know, and sure enough, you know, of course, like I said, when you're going into this world of a fast paced and fast paced environment, it's a, you know, eat what you kill, so to speak. There is some agents that do kind of, you know, you know, somehow sneak up behind you when you're not looking. And then, of course, now you're having to retract and try to figure out how to still make amends and so forth. But at the same time, you still have that distrust of other uh, agents that are there more or less taking advantage of your like prospects and so forth. I got to interrupt you on this because this is bothering me on such a level. Do you think that that man, by putting that out there, is helping create a distrust where there shouldn't be one? Is that why we maybe have agents that cut corners and cross signs because they think it's the way things are done? I think our instructors and our speakers and our leadership, they sometimes forget, because I know I've done it before, they forget how impactful their words are and how it pushes people on one path or the other. And I am I'm horrified. I thought he was going to say they won't be in the business five years from now because that's more accurate. But if he told y'all to look around and not trust people, shame on him. Shame on him. Yeah, yeah. And that was actually, um, well, to segue what you were saying, yes, they said in one year, 90% of will be gone. And he was right. I was shocked that 90% of the agents that came in of the 60,000 were eliminated from the uh, real estate pool. And the one that did stick around, you know, either made money or they still believe that, you know, of course, they can turn around and make money in the industry. And of course, whoever stuck around, as you know, during that time where you could literally throw a pebble to a house and sell it. I mean, you became a top producer or, you're, or at the same time, you are you know, bringing home a paycheck and so forth. So with that said, this goes into what you're saying. It caused this ambiguity uh, in regards to how agents work with each other. In fact, those, you know, working with a brokerage shop, a colleague of mine had more or less, you know, fortunately snuck up behind me, took one of my uh, clients and long as short came down to 
before cell phones were invented and all this other stuff, you know, where you're still using the Thomas Guide maps and so forth, not GPS and so forth, they literally had to go to a phone bill of who made that first call to see how who would get that lead in the first place. And of course, they would reach out to, you know, obviously you never want to get the client involved, but in this case, the client was involved. And then they, you know, yes, I was a successor in there, but at the same time, it was kind of, you know, you wondered if that was that was the cause and so forth, why realtors were trying to uh, more or less circumvent the system or try to find an easier way to more or less get leads or work on uh, other clients and so forth without their colleagues knowing and so forth. With that said, I'd like to segue into why I think uh, technology over paper is good. Since like I said, my background is being in software in the uh, software industry because what I refer to as, you know, during the open house events that are happening right now and, and what I've seen, some of the crazy stuff I've seen in, in my Real estate career, of, you know, being in the real estate career, uh, real estate for seven years and about three years in land sales, is that uh, I, I refer to it as like, and this is obviously my personal opinion, and you know, having surveys with going to roughly about seven trade shows, major trade shows this year with our organization, um, I refer to it as like the the top five uh, reasons why consumers do not sign in during an open house event and so forth. Um, this is reaching out to the consumers out there, and I believe you know, number one would, you know, uh, well, in regards to number five. Realtors probably don't ask, you know, <laughs> ask, it's fine, or they're too right. shy to ask, you know, like, you know, hey, the sellers are requesting to you to sign here, you know, sign in, would you please sign in and so forth, so they don't ask and so forth. Number four, consumers are not wanting to, you know, the nosy neighbors knowing their information, you know, the signing in the traditional sign-in sheets and so forth. Number three would be like looky-loos that are not part of the neighborhood, that maybe they're the, the folks that are in, there, that they're signing into the, um, into these open houses, again, based on traditional sign-in sheets, you know, that, you know, whether they get harassed or by, you know, phone calls, or maybe even like I said, in this case, you've probably heard of already where agents are getting harassed on the premise and so forth. And then of course, what I refer to, which has happened to me three times in my career, because like I said, I was very productive and very uh, successful in the real estate career. I refer to them as rogue agents. These are, uh, these are agents that are more or less complacent, so to speak, to where they don't work hard for their leads and so forth. So they come in and this happened at a time when the, I don't know if you recall, the, the razors that came out with the, the first razors that came out, they were really flip phones. They're really thin. The Moto Razor, I think. Yes, that puts a date on me. <laughs> so, it's so okay. I got a bag phone in my car, Ron, and nobody knows how old I am. Yeah. And the thing is, I was using the StarTac phones. You remember the big ones that was like StarTac. Oh, my mother still has her StarTac. It won't break. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I want to buy it because that is vintage. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, with that said, is that I was at an open house. I had a listing that I had already sold on one side of the street. Then I had sold another, I was holding another open house for a listing that, you know, the sellers wanted me to hold it since I sold the other one, you know, probably less than two weeks or what have you. The sellers that I, sellers or the owners of the house that I already sold a house to had call, called me and says, hey, Ron, by the way, we had an agent call me from this XYZ brokerage and we don't know how they got our information. I said, I don't know. You know, I never gave it to them. So we started like, you know, thinking like, how could they got your number? I said, well, by the way, did you sign in the sign-in sheet here at the open house? He said, yeah, we came in to see, you know, take a look at the neighbors. Sure enough, we found out that the agent at the end of the day was taking their, the, the camera, which was, I think, one of the first with the camera on it, uh, the, uh, the mix of the next cell phones, but Moto Razors had taken a snapshot of my list. So, yeah, I call them rogue agents. You know, they're the ones that, like I said, uh, that, you know, find an easier way to go out there. And believe it or not, I mean, just the truth to be told, I was at a, at a expo. I won't mention which expo, but a realtor. Uh, more or less con- uh, said I was guilty of charge. He said he, they said, he literally said he was guilty of charge. He has done that before. He walked in, took a picture of a list, and walked right back out and so forth. I didn't know that was happening because it would never cross my mind. But, you know, this week, and we record this in December, friends, there was evidence that journalists and photographers were taking pictures of the congressional notes in the judiciary oh, committee wow. and i saw that and i'm like they ought to lose their press credentials and then you tell me about a realtor snitching information from an open house they ought to lose their realtor status and frankly if you're a public member you should know the only way we police each other is by turning each other in and because realtors are passive aggressive and they love people they never turn in the bad actors and so they keep on doing this and that is some bad behavior that that is, and like I said, I, I I gave them kind of free card. I did speak with their broker and says if your agent does this again, I did find out who it was, you know, because I, you know, of, of course I'm, you know, when you're in tune with the the dynamics of your, you know, like especially you're, you're constantly holding these open houses four to five a weekend, you know who's coming in, you know, especially if they're just kind of randomly showing up and you're like I've seen you before, why are you at this open house? 
So now we move into the age of digital signing, which of course alleviates a lot of that traditional signing where someone can do those type of a uh, formats. So the, the second part of it is that there is digital platforms that are out there. I, for one, you know, I said, I've been an advocate of a, a digital signing, going paperless and so forth. I've started a company myself that focuses on open house events and so forth. We don't practice that type of a manner in regards to having consumers information used for other purposes, like for advertisements or outside of that. We don't practice solutions like social profiling on our on our platform. Uh, there is solutions that are out there that are doing it. And unfortunately, consumers are walking into these homes seeing these type of applications, you know, tablets and, you know, the, you know, the tablets are online digital, not knowing that there's no full disclosure of these uh, tools that are using these type of uh, social profiling to where they could use the consumer's information for their own use and so forth. So by social profiling, are you talking about the option that many of these applications have where you could sign in with your Facebook account and then suddenly everything is connected and so the original app now has all of the data from Facebook. Is that the kind of thing you're profiling where all the information is being turned over because nobody's reading terms of service? Basically, yes. It's not being consented, so to speak, to the consumers. They just walk in, sign in, you know, because you figure a sign in sheet is the typical first name, last name, email address, phone number, right? Once they capture that information and email address, and it's already tied, they could, you know, they're profiling different, more or less mediums or platforms out there that could extract that data information for purposes of marketing or understanding more about that consumer, which I think that's, there's a gray area and every realtor I've talked to, like, you know, face to face, they know it's a gray area, which is interesting, but you know, it's almost like that slap on the hand. Like if you know it's a gray area, why go that, that path? So we do, like I said, we don't, uh, uh, in regards to the technologies that are built out there that don't practice it, you know, I would, the only thing I could say is buyers beware or consumers beware as you're walking into these open house events that use a digital platform to, to more or less advocate. You know, of course, you're, you're going in there because they're, they're showing that they're going to show privacy of your information. But at the same time, there's solutions out there they need to ask about or research about that use these type of uh, uh, tools, such as social providing, that's actually a negative to the consumer because uh, they don't know if there's information that's being sold and, you know, or being discriminated because they're able to go ahead and profile different aspects of that consumer that's walking through that door. Yeah, it's definitely a fine line. And I, I love that people should think to ask that question when they go in, because I do require sign-ins, not for me as much as so my sellers will know later on if there was a problem. They need to know who was in their property. And I think sometimes realtors forget when they're asking for the sign-ins that that person who owns the house maybe has kids are going to lay their head down to sleep there at night and the world's gotten a little bit crazy, but you definitely need to know who's going to have access to your information and how it's going to be used. So ask those questions. That's fantastic insight. And one more thing, too. I do, I do want to say that, you know, as you know, that during an open house event as well, that in regards to having for the agents being you know, rest assured that they feel protected during an open house event. And like I said, I'm sure you've heard of some of the instances or harassments or that viral video that's gone out with the realtor that was caught on ring that was pushed into the bush and so forth. And you know, and I think there was an article about it on NAR that, you know, that, you know, that talks about the safety or for realtors that are holding open houses. Oh, yeah. Realtors should never go alone. Take a lender partner, take a technology partner, take a spouse, take a friend, take somebody. Right. And like I said, and the like solutions like ours that we do offer, you know, a safety feature that's built in with an application. But long, long and short, there is a lot of stuff that's been happening. I mean, in regards to, like, as you mentioned, it's, like, it's it's crazy out there. There's a lot of stuff that's happening now in regards to why folks shouldn't sign in and whatnot. But I think the digital age aspect of why technology is better over the paper because now you're able to go ahead and protect the consumer's rights. They don't see it. There's no look and lose that's going to go in there. There's no rogue agents that's going to steal your information and start calling you, or, you know, on the phone when you're already working with a, an agent that, you, you know, of course you uh, signed with and so forth. But like I said, there is tools out there uh, going back to the same thing, but always ask, 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 ask uh, for the consumers what type of tools they're using, who they're using it with. And, you know, be aware that there's information is not being shared and so forth. And they are using t- these type of tools. At least they have the right. It's been full disclosure. They have the right. But you can't go into work for a job and the you know, job says, you know, what? they disclose it. Look, look we're going to do a background check. At least they gave you full disclosure. Now, it's so your right as a consumer. Do I want that job or not? Or am I going to disclose? my information for them to do a fully background check correct right but other than that i've seen a lot of crazy stuff but yeah it's 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 been a fun ride during you know you know like an open house and so forth in my tenure like i said i've definitely had you know in in a year's time i'd say if you average about four to five open houses a weekend every single weekend for a straight year you know like you're looking between 2000 to 2005 2006 it was really six it was really busy 
plan an open house if you really work if you really work at it you can and so a lot of the stuff that i've seen out there not only you know what i've been hearing you know going into these expos you know we're talking about safety you know I, you know i'm talking men too as well so it's not only females that are might be targeted and so forth doing these open house events the men as well I mean, i've talked to a couple agents that said they were restrained arms around their you know there'd be two guys walking in uh one restrains them around the the waistline or their arms holding them down and the other ones you know uh, I don't know if I can say this but a gun to their head and you know they strip the watch the wallet and run off oh yeah it's definitely not restricted to one gender it's just think about the vulnerability of the situation you're in and realtors are so busy trying to be friendly to people they sometimes misplace their trust and that's why you have to have good measures in place so my question is this technology that you have is this something that's current and available for download or purchase and you want to give us a really quick snapshot of it yeah definitely yeah uh, yes it is it's current and it's available we're we would boast that we're the most powerful open house management platform in the industry we are the first open house it's uh the company's called ogest o-h-g-u-e-s-t-s plural.com and the beauty of that is that uh, we are the first to the market with a safety where we produce safety sure safety feature that allows the agents to not only hold an open house, but it's built within the platform. So, of course, if they feel that creeper vibe coming through that door or whatnot, they could be rest assured they could push the activate this little button. It sends out uh, an immediate alarm to five of their colleagues, friends, or family. It'll send a text message, like, you know, call me back. This is a, a warning. Uh, it'll have the geolocation of that where they're at, whether that, that house or the house next door. It'll have a, the address, of course, of the open house. And it has up to eight second recording of that time that it's. And it, it sends it within five seconds to whoever they have on their emergency. We do offer that for the first, you know, like I said, uh, the tools are too, is that, we, again, we advocate privacy. Uh, we're a big proponent of security. I think our technology overall stands apart from a lot of the solutions out there. We do have a lot of security measures in place. The agents that are rogue agents I had mentioned, if they were to sit there and fish around the online, they can't see the list. They can't see the leads or whatnot. So all the data is protected. Everything behind the, the platform, we don't, like I said, there's no other tools that are in there. It is straightforward. It's cut and dry to the consumers. Uh, nothing of their information is being shared. It's not being sent to a third party software or whatnot, like, like social profiling software. Do not at all advocate those type of practices. We're in the market advocating to other vertical markets as well. But at the same time, the real estate, we advocate to real estate brokers, mortgage brokers, and realtors and so forth and been very successful. Very cool. Okay, so realtors and investors and lenders out there, y'all should take a look at this. And consumers that are out there, when your realtor's holding an open house, make sure you ask them what they're doing to protect your security and your privacy, but also ask them to collect information on people coming through your house. So encourage your realtor to have good business practices. And realtors, when you have tools like this, you got to tell the public because when you look at some of the hedge funds that are getting into real estate and they're doing houses, they are letting people in through an app and there's nobody tracking this information except for that main company. So think carefully about how you can be a partner with your community as a local realtor. Ron, if they want to download this, how do they get to it? It's a www.ogest.com. And uh, they can reach me directly if they'd like to at Ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E at ogest.com. Well, there you go, people. All the information will be in the show notes for this episode. Ron, thank you for some insights on open houses. And thank you for using your background to create something that's good for the public and good for the realtor community. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Leah. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. All right, guys, if you are even a vendor or a realtor, broker, investor, inspector, lender, or a normal person who's bought and sold or lived around real estate, and you've got something you want to share with us, some insights or input, give me a shout at Lee Brown on Twitter or any of the social networks be featured in a future episode. Hit subscribe, don't forget, and give me five stars. And otherwise, I'll see you next time. If you are listening to this episode and you need to tell us something about your crazy life in or around real estate, then tweet me at Lee Brown or reach me on any of the social networks. That's if you're a broker, realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular normal human being who happens to have dealt in real estate. Subscribe for more episodes. And as always, we are thrilled that you joined us for some crazy shit in real estate. See you next time.